All right, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Airbus 320 Tech Talk. What do all those buttons do? I am out in Raleigh, North Carolina tonight. Uh, it's really cold outside. I'm just uh, trying to dodge the elements, uh, stay inside the hotel, but I figured I'd uh, continue on with our little tour of the uh, Airbus 320 flight deck. So picking it up where we left off. Um, we talked last time about this area on the uh, upper overhead um, portion of the panel here. So we're gonna move up uh, up here to the very top right, this area up here is referred to as the uh, overhead maintenance panel. And just as the name implies, uh, this is a panel that um, is, is pretty much dedicated and, and therefore specifically um, for the uh, maintenance technicians to, to use for whatever uh, various jobs they, they might need to do on the aircraft. So we as line pilots, we're not necessarily interacting with this panel up here pretty much ever uh, during the normal course of uh, our routine flight operations. I mean, the only thing that we're taught to do with this panel is um, when you come in and do the initial flight deck setup, you know, you'll just look up here to see that all the lights are out, switches are guarded, and that just kind of tells you that everything is in uh, the normal condition, so to speak. So that's really, um, you know, once again, like a lot of these panels up here kind of out of sight, out of mind, something we're not really um, using at all during during the normal course of flight, like I said, and, and uh, not really thinking about a whole lot uh, day to day. So um, I figured um, there's a lot of information to throw at you between all the um, the functionality of this panel here. So I kind of decided to break um, this panel down into three videos. We're going to talk first about this kind of the upper third here. We'll move down and talk about the second portion. Then we'll we'll make a third video to talk about the last uh, portion down here, just because like I said, it's a lot of data to throw at you. So um, anyway, starting at the very top here, uh, we have this uh, CVR headset jack here. And just as the name implies, um, this is a location where you could plug in like an, like an ear headset, like listening device um, into the CVR system that um, you could listen to some sort of data recordings that, that might have been detected um, without pulling the actual CVR entirely out of the aircraft. And, um, I was really trying to dig deep in the mails and try to find some more information on how exactly you would go about playing back that data, and I, I couldn't find much, so I, I don't have much more uh, information to tell you other than that, but that's, that's all this is up here. It's just a little headset jack. Um, moving down from there, we have this oxygen timer reset button here. So uh, on the Airbus, we have this system that if you had a loss of cabin pressure, the airplane would either automatically or you could manually deploy the passenger oxygen mass in the main cabin so people could breathe. And there's this whole complex like set of circuitry that kind of monitors all of that system, seeing what it's doing, setting power out, kind of uh, accomplishing the task of, of what that equipment is there to do. Um, so uh, if that system were deployed, um, this auction timer reset button here is just a kind of a way to reset the system logic and, and kind of tell the plane that everything is uh, normal once again. And I have another slide that I was going to show you just to um, show you how it correlates. Um, this is the lower overhead uh, panel right here. And we can see um, there's this little oxygen panel that, um, whoops, uh, if the uh, system was deployed, um, you would see uh, this light right here, this, this uh, uh, system on light. And I, I apologize for the blurriness of the image. Um, but um, once again, the, the system is just registering that the masks have deployed as advertised kind of thing. And you have this, like I said, system on light that just kind of tells you as, as a flight crew that that has happened. Um, so... Uh, once again, uh, bringing it back um, to where we started, um, this little button up here uh, just solely exists so that a mechanic could come in and, and once after all the masks have been restowed and everything's been reset, um, you could just reset the system logic, uh, if you will, um, that oversees that whole uh, portion of the aircraft. So. Uh, moving from uh, there to the right, we have this service interphone override button right here. So first of all, what exactly is the service interphone system on the aircraft? Well, this is actually kind of a neat thing as far as I'm concerned. Um, there is several jacks placed around the aircraft that um, if a mechanic needed to do something on the outside of the airplane and communicate with the flight deck, about what was going on. Um, there is a, an interphone system that these two individuals could communicate with one another. 
and I pulled the schematic to show you guys um, where exactly these jacks exist on the aircraft. This was kind of, this is actually a really interesting thing to me to, to learn this about the Airbus. I, I never learned any other airplanes that had a system like this where you could, you know, from an audio standpoint, plug in and talk to uh, the flight deck to see what was going on up there. But you can just see here in this, this schematic, you know, where exactly the, uh, um, the headset jacks are on the exterior of the aircraft. So that the mechanics can do their job and, and uh, coordinate um, whatever, whatever kind of work needs to be done. Um, one of the most interesting ones to me that they thought to put on the airplane, I, I thought this was really clever, they actually put headset or audio jacks out on the engines. And um, just to give a little background about why that would be useful, um, there is actually a condition or a situation um, on this aircraft where um, you might have a faulty starter valve. So in other words, like you, you might not be able to start the engine normally, and there's actually a procedure that you can run um, where a mechanic can go out to one of the engines and actually open up this little access door and, and manually turn um, this valve um, with a special tool that will actually open up the air turbine starter to allow you to start the engine. So there's a, um, a clear cut case where you, you would really wanna have some, some very, um, you know, uh, clear and open line of communication, so to speak, between like what was happening up in the flight deck and what's going on out here by this engine. So um, that um, jack system or the service interphone, once again, allows you to do that. And um, that button there uh, specifically though, coming back to that, um, what it does is normally um, this service interphone system is only active when the struts are compressed so in other words when the weight is on the wheels and the airplane thinks it's on the ground um, actually technically speaking 10 seconds after the the struts compress the service interphone system will activate and people can talk freely um, over these channels um, but this interphone button right here um, actually will will override that normal system logic. So let's say, you know, suppose that the airplane is up on jacks and they're needed, you know, they're, they're doing a gear swing or something like that and the, the struts are extended so the airplane normally would think that it's flying. Um, you know, in, in this sort of maintenance application where once again the airplane's up on jacks, it's not physically in the air. Maybe there's some reason that the mechanics want to talk, you know, from, from jack to jack or over the service interphone system. And um, that is a way, utilizing this button here, pressing this, turning it on, uh, would allow um, those folks to, like, like we said, override the normal system logic that's built into place there. Um, so let's see, next thing from there, moving uh, over to the right is this avionics compartment light. Um, this is a very simple one. Normally um, when the light's out and the switch is in the normal position is in the auto mode. And um, we can kind of come back and see this schematic here once again to just see what part of the aircraft we're talking about. But there is uh, this uh, avionics compartment here just around this little three symbol that uh, normally houses, you know, you know, obviously like some sorts of like avionics computers and things like that, that uh, mechanics might need to get down there and be doing some work on. And um, all that that's doing for you is that, you know, normally there is a light that comes on uh, when the door or the access door anyways is opened to access that panel area there. And for whatever reason, Airbus decided that you needed to build in this override so that, you know, I, I'm not an ANP, I'm not a maintenance technician, but maybe there's a procedure where these guys actually need to get up into this upper, you know, cavity of the aircraft and do some work with the door closed for whatever reason. And you might want to have some lights on there to see what you're doing down there. So that is um, what that switch is all about. And um, that uh, pretty much wraps it up for the first third of our discussion. And we'll, we'll pick it off, or we'll, uh, excuse me, we'll pick it up uh, with the, uh, the couple buttons uh, down below that. Um, on the next segment. So thanks for joining me, guys. Have a good night. We'll talk to you next time.